Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living Podcast. Yes, sir, Bob. Hold on a minute. I got to answer a question here. I'm back. <laughs> like I really have somebody talking to me. So uh, welcome to the show. Oh <laughs> Way to go, Rob. I was trying to look hey, electronically. Everybody. I was trying to be electronically important here, but it ain't happening. <laughs> yeah, you were trying up. to take a selfie. Give it up. <laughs> I know, it's still hard. <laughs> so uh, anyway, welcome to the podcast. Uh, we have uh, John and Debbie here today. John Pearson will I be at, uh, hopping on when he gets a chance. And Rev is out and about. I think he's having a bad day. And uh, uh he wanted to leave his bad day off the air, so not a problem. Anyway, um, so before we get going, I want to remind you that this is also an audio podcast, and uh, you guys are getting as bad as I am with your cell phones. Um, yeah, I was doing it because you did. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted you to see what it looked like. Yeah, kind of goofy. So anyway, uh, if you uh, listen to podcasts on your cell phone, uh, just use the software that you use to find podcasts. Type in Ranger Rob Country Living Podcast. Put it in your favorites and listen to any of our 85 episodes. And, uh, yeah, we're right up there. Uh, yeah, send that down a little farther so we can have cleavage on the no, show. No, not happening. <laughs> I'll do it then. Can <laughs> you <laughs> <Right>, scare us all? <laughs> oh. Let's see what else is going on. We are also on um, 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 Cooker River Ranch Radio, which you can uh, listen to our shows on Sundays at um, uh, 8 o'clock in the evening, I believe. And last but not least, if you ever get the opportunity, we all are Idaho Pasture Pig um, uh, um, owners, farms. <laughs> uh, but for. Uh, so anyway, uh, you want to buy, try out some Idaho pasture pig pork chops or bacon or sausage, all that yummy stuff. Uh, just to go to Central Oregon Grown, and uh, eventually uh, all of our farms will be working together, and uh, uh, we'll have endless, endless pork. <coughs> Excuse me. Last but not least, uh, we are in negotiations now for uh, looking at putting beef on our site so uh, uh won't be long we'll be grass-fed black angus beef we're working on it may take a month or two but uh when it happens it happens and uh that'll make us a pretty complete um from eggs to chickens to all kinds of stuff and uh all locally raised so how are you guys doing doing great great living Last life <laughs> John, John's a, I gotta catch catch the latest stories on CNN. No, no. <laughs> CNN. Letting the dog back in. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so today's subject is actually we've had some discussions. Uh, we haven't really like sat down for hours and discussed it and stuff. But uh, last week um, we had something interesting in the ranch. You want me to tell you what it was? Yes, please, because I don't know yet. <laughs> well, we had an emergency response on our cell phone saying, evacuate now. Oh, yeah. And so, uh, however, that wasn't actually for this Crooked River Ranch area. <laughs> however, uh, the the message was kind of vague, and a lot of us, you know, and I noticed with the um, on people on next door and some other, you know, they immediately jumped at at the people that thought maybe it was the ranch and you got to realize that a lot of us don't know the roads they didn't say it was culver they didn't they it was kind of vague as far as what the announcement was and so there was a lot of questions and people were on facebook saying what's going on some people were actually <laughs> set up their trailers and were ready to go out the door because you know it's to evacuate now don't wait great yeah, and uh, uh, level three on Crooked River Ranch. Yeah, and so you know, the rumors were flying a little bit of, you know, some people are on there. Oh, stupid people! You should have. You know, it's over in Culver and all that stuff. And while people were trying to just make sure they knew understood what the message meant. So, uh, uh, there's, uh, I guess, well, 
I know people that got confused saying, was that our area or not? And if not, but it was not Crooked River Ranch and it did not affect us. However, um, and there was clarification uh, of where it was after the facts. So, but, you know, when you're out of town, I was over at Bymart and I think you guys were shopping too. And we got yeah, these- we, we were in Clackamas. Yeah, so I, we- I got it. I got it over my phone. And it yeah. did, and the okay. police department or fire department did say Crooked River Ranch. Yeah. So, anyway, um, so yeah, a little bit of confusion. Before I found out. But yeah, and and but the big the sub what brought the subject up on the show was Sherry and I were kind of, you know, doing our thing over in Bymart, and and we're kind of thinking, you know, if we had the if we got notification leave now. Um, we would try our best to grab our dog, our cat, and uh, the chickens would have to stay, and the and the, and the pigs would have to stay. Uh, we might open up the paddocks and let them have the two and a half acres, um, give them a fighting chance. Um, but uh, it really made us think. It's like, okay, we've been talking a lot about being prepared and doing a lot of prepping and and stuff like that, and I realized. We're not prepared <laughs> at all. No. <laughs> it's like, because uh, both you and I, you know, your family and ours, we both have RVs. So we would probably, if we had RVs really ready to go, um, where you just had to hook them up, throw your animals in and, and grab a few odds and ends, um, be out the door with our RV in tow, which I would prefer to be homeless <laughs> in an RV uh, and something to help take care of our animals where I wouldn't have to put them in shelters. Um, and uh, I don't care what's going on. I would find the most vacant lot and that's safe from a fire area. And I'd take my RV and I'd be boondocking in Safeway. I don't know. You know, I, I, I wouldn't care at this point. But uh, so uh, it kind of like, gee, Sherry, is, do we have a, propane filled up in all the trailers and the tra- uh, do we have a little bit of freeze-dried food which we freeze dry our own eggs we have stuff we could easily keep some stuff in the rv to uh, hold us over for a couple of days with meals and whole works um and uh you know do i have a laptop um do i have things to charge up our phones um and the answer was no <laughs> we're not we haven't done any of that in our rv so uh, uh, I didn't I have to move over. So uh, a stream a streamliner. Hello, welcome. Uh, RVs are a real ha- a hassle uh, to get to get road ready. Yes, no, um, not but, really. <clears throat> and mine's pretty much easy easy to go. I just don't have anything in it. Um, so I already changed out the water. I, I keep three quarters of a tank of water in there because we have guests come over a lot and stuff so i switched out for you know nice fresh water i have bottled water in there but i don't have any you know there's no reason because we do freeze drying and stuff i could easily have at least a, a week's worth of food ready to go and all i have to do is just get the critters in 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 uh in the rv and uh, a few basic things and 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 um Oh, when you're living in it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would yeah. be an asshole. I agree. Yes. Um, yeah, we, we leave clothes in ours. We leave food in ours all the time. Wintertime, I'll take, you know, the stuff that can freeze out. But other than that, we have clothes that we leave in there all the time. Yeah. The, you know, Rob, the most important thing I learned about this fire thing, yeah. we're, we're new at living in a fire danger area is your documents yeah and uh sherry is actually pretty good about that there's one box that has all of our titles and things like that um and yeah i so, know where they are but i never even thought maybe leave them in the trailer during the fire season so if you gotta go it's in there yeah but yeah i i, I learned a big lesson this with this this first yeah, time and that's we've the point. Had that scare. That's kind of the point we wanted to make with this show was um, here. I was, you know, pretty comfortable. I've got a year's worth of 
prep food here and stuff like that. But as far as evacuation, I haven't, I've never thought that I would have to go bug out, you might say, and stuff. But in the case of an emergency, um, like a fire or something like that, that's the exception to the rule. Um, at, at our age, if I was younger, I would probably be more enthusiastic about being ready to bug out if I had to. But um, anyway, I didn't really put much thought into it until that came along. And I'm going, wow, we've really dropped the ball. We're, <laughs> we're not practicing what we preach very well at all when it comes to uh, being prepped and, and, and just being ready for little events, you know, for events like that, that could, uh, um, <laughs> it, it would... I, know, I, I hate the thought of it even happening, but um, I think I would probably, depending on the situation, uh, do what I could to hook up the RV and get out the door with the RV, even though we only have two ways off the ranch. And so it's probably going to be a little traffic, but what's the difference in traffic if I've got a fifth wheel on the back or not? It's still going to be traffic. So. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, and they, give, they give you enough warning to get out. So uh, and, and streamliners got to get out good immediately. Point. That you still have a little bit of time, but you know, my first thought was the documents and Lucy, my <laughs> filthy chicken. The rest of them would have to stay, but I was grabbing Lucy because my brother already was putting Bentley in the car, in his car, and Ash, but. Yep, and uh, Streamliner uh, in his comments are, are bringing up some, uh, a, a lot of things we're probably, you're going to forget some things, but there's some definitely Hi, basics. Hi, John. Hey, um, everybody. Sorry I'm late. I know. We were all holding our breath until uh, Debbie passed out. You know, and, <laughs> yeah. and, uh, so we were talking about what oh, if you, uh, and, I, and by the way, I heard that you had a fire near Eugene. Just um, but uh, we were talking about, um, uh, if you had to bug out, which a lot of us all agree that if I don't have to bug out, I'm not going to bug out. But if there's a mandatory yeah. bug out, or uh, <laughs> then uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I must be the only one that has podcasts that has to fight with chickens. <laughs> These corners cross are terrible, John. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> They're terrible. Yeah. And <laughs> hey, you know, it's it. Hey, Rob, it's funny that you were mentioning that because uh, when we had we had an alert last week, and uh, got Mindy and I thinking, you know, and then we realized it was Taylor Road and it was not by us and all that kind of stuff. But it's funny because you know you had your your last show talking about that or the show before I forget, but um, we were sitting there thinking, you know what, if you had ten minutes to get out or if you had a half an hour to get out i i told mindy i said you know we really need to have a uh we really need to have a plan and it's funny because we had this mindy and i had this conversation just well we haven't done anything about it but we had the conversation <laughs> last week <That's> start. <laughs> but but you know what i my thought is is uh you know what if you had to you know when, when you're sitting there in the evening um you think about you don't have time to think about it when the time comes but if yeah. you're sitting around in the evening think you know what we should grab the you know the hard disks for the you know this or that or the pictures that we have saved or you know and have an actual list if you have a half an hour to bug out what are you going to get in a half an hour uh, yeah because you know, yeah, that's if you don't have something like that that's when you grab stuff you don't need that's or or you're going to grab just yeah you'll grab the stuff you don't need and, uh, you know, you'll end up with a, you know, a bag of chips and a pair of socks and that's about it, you know, <laughs> but, but if you had a chance to, to have a list, even if, you know, if it's, if it's 10 minutes or if it's five minutes or less, or it's just grab and go, that's one thing. And you should still be prepared, I think for that. Yeah. Um, but, but if you had a little bit of time to think about it, I know I drive off the, out of the driveway going crap. I know what I forgot, you know? <laughs> As you're watching the flames behind you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I would go, well, I don't want to forget my ultrasound. That's it. <laughs> See? <laughs> yeah, never, there's no never way. never know when I got to check a pregnancy of a pig, you know? Well, 
See, yeah, that's and a, there's no there's, way we can load those pigs. No. In that nope. short of time, you just can't. They won't go in. No. You have to fight with them. Well, but you'd have a heck of a fire sale. <laughs> no, we just have a barbecue when we get back. <laughs> that's so mean. <laughs> yeah, so it's it's. And I'm sure there's other people that are more sensitive, like their goats and their sheep and stuff like that. But uh, re realistically, uh, you're not going to get them in your trailer, and you're not. Um, no. Maybe not if you only were a really uh, small homestead, and you maybe you had a, a utility trailer to throw a goat and a sheep and uh, a couple dogs, and that's it. But um, yeah, because <laughs> animals know things happen long before humans do. Yeah. Yep. Um, I know our option is I can open up the paddocks and, and my outer perimeter of my property of two and a half acres is um, accessible to let them give them a fighting chance um, uh, instead of this, you know, holding them in a, you know, just a paddock. So uh, if I had time, maybe I'd release them and at least give them that property, you know, but uh but that'd be a good thing to have written down. So you think, oh, shit, I got to go open the back gate. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. If Otherwise, you're going to go, crap, I should have opened the back gate, you know? Yeah. And then and feel it, guilty. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> yeah, it'll be, it's a lot of hard decisions for a homestead to think about, you know, people get cherished horses and the heritage stuff. And, um, you know, you're going to have to make those hard decisions. But if you're like mandatory get out now you, you don't have time to corral the horses or get no. the c cattle they're they're not cooperative at all right yeah. um, you know well, so uh, i would probably open up the pig pens and at least they got two and a half acres to run around. yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is too is you know it's it's not kind of mean to say but if you lost it if you if you ended up losing everything to you know then, then you know you got to have a game plan on where you're going to take them, because if you do get them loaded and you do have them and you do lose, you know everything and you're not coming back to your property for a week or two, you know where are you going? Yeah, yeah. my mommies. There you go. There's a plan. <laughs> That's where I'm going too. So Sher Sherry goes. We need to make arrangements with John Pearson so we can all take our RVs over there. <laughs> <laughs> We're on our way. Nice. That'd be awesome. <laughs> So yeah, as our houses are all burning up, we'll go to John's. <laughs> we'll just, be all right. We'll drink all of his pretty green grass. <laughs> we'll drink all of his cider. <laughs> we'll need a drink when we get there, won't we? Uh, we, we just go yeah. hang out with the Walmart crowd. I think not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the right clothes for that. I can't dress up. You can buy them at Walmart. <laughs> That's right. So yeah, that would be a. Uh, uh, and a lot of silly little things like, oh, crap, I forgot my wallet. <laughs> that would be John. <laughs> but, I mean, that's just as easy to forget that as anything else. Sure. So, uh, sure. Um, so it's like, do you keep maybe a little bit of spare cash in the RV and um, there's 101 hiding places that you can put some stuff? And, um, but, yeah, it's it's like. Once you, when you really start thinking about what we're talking about here, um, there's a lot of stuff that, you know, you could really save yourself a little stress by having all, you know, if you had a, an RV and you had everything ready to hook up in a quick amount of time, I could easily back my fifth wheel in, hit an automatic thing, my lifters come up, I'm almost ready to go. Yeah. And uh, um, it'd just be nice to have a lot of essentials like, you know, uh, general clothes and, and, and a laptop and some electronics and uh, things like that. Um, you know, I, I love, I wish I could, I wish we could have had a chance to interview some of the people over in Culver that went through that last week and, uh, and, and get, you know, find out some of the realistic things that happened to them and what they had to think about and, you know, what and how they bugged out of there, which was. Actually, they were over in what three three rivers three area? Rivers. Yeah, I don't think it was Covert last week. Covert was the last one. This one was over like on the other side of the Deschutes on that plateau up there. That's yeah. where that fire was. Hmm. That's so, the yeah, one we get closer to three rivers. 
Yeah. Yeah. It st still would have been interesting to find out once they went through the process of what happened and what they thought they could do and didn't and uh, yeah. how people treated them. And um, yeah, that it's a little worrisome. I mean, we, I, mean, I guess the big thing on the show. Definitely the big an eye opener. Yeah. yeah. And I think putting real thought into it. I mean, if you really just shut off the TV for a minute, sit down, sit down with your wife or partner or whatever you got going on family and say, what if we have to bug out of here and we got to be out of here in 10 minutes? Uh, maybe, you know, are we prepared? And are there a few things we can do to make the, the, the situation better? Yeah. Well, it's just like a fire drill in school or anything else. If you, but, but you know, we do all our, we do all the stuff at our homesteads uh, in, in preparation for a bad winter or to have our own food or be self-sufficient. But you're right. That's something we you never really think about. But it's just as important. Or um, you think it's not going to happen to you? Well, well mistake. You know, huh. but then your then your phone goes off, and that was a that was a that was kind of kind of scary. You know, when the when they had the holiday farm fire a few years back. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. So, one of uh, the people where I work, um, their relation had a house right there. Uh, on the Mackenzie, they got a they got a phone call at eleven o'clock at night from uh, this person who works at our shop. You know, they they called because they were concerned. They heard there was a fire. They woke them up from a dead sleep. Their their fire alarms weren't going off because there was no smoke yet. But when they ran outside, that fire was moving so fast they barely had time to run to their vehicles. I mean. They they bugged out. That thing was going like thirty something miles an hour, you know, down yeah. that highway. It was, you know, and they lost everything at that at their house. They lost, you know, they they weren't able to, you know, grab anything. But uh, they lost it all. But yeah. it can't happen that fast. Hi, Good Eats. Yeah, um, yeah. It was really it was kind of scary because we were in Milwaukee. Hmm. There was nothing we could do for two and a half hours. Thank God my brother was here to get Bentley. Uh -huh. But other than that, <laughs> by the time we got home, we couldn't come in and get anything. Yeah. So, yeah, that real eye opener. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I guess the big thing on this show is we want to urge people to, to think about that subject and take some steps. Uh, if you don't have an RV or a trailer, um, at least put a few uh, things uh, in your vehicle that, you know, it's one less thing to worry about. Um, maybe make sure and have your most important documents uh, easily to grab. Um, <laughs> your veteran, make sure you get your DD-214. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget your ultrasound. <laughs> Might have um, to have that for your next pig. <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, another thing we always want to do is find out what's new on the homesteads. I'll, I'll list just a couple simple things that we're doing. Um, we are getting ready to move our sows. Um, uh, or, um, <laughs> like, I like the icon here. <laughs> um, so we're getting ready to move our two sows into uh, their furling areas. Uh, but before we do that, we have to run some uh, single wire electric around their uh, paddocks because I've got the new pig. If you've been watching our videos, uh, Penny, which is a rambunctious old pig, and so it's like, all right, we better make sure she's got a wire in her. My, now my other sow, she's like, who cares? Um, but uh, so I got a rambunctious sow and a really calm sow uh, pig that's uh, supposedly <laughs> supposed to be <laughs> with this ultrasound. Um, coming next uh, next month, and that's only two weeks away, and so uh, it's getting close. And so we got to make sure that they're all cleaned out. We got to make sure that their feral houses have nice fresh hay, and they can make beds out of them and make a nest. And uh, yeah, so we're ready to rock and roll. We're um, going to be surprised because I have no clue when ours is going to be. <laughs> well, laboring. Well, it'd be kind of like Maggie going. I think she's going to have her babies now <laughs> when you guys came over. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, because he didn't, uh, he didn't know re- when they got pregnant. Yeah, so <clears throat> it's gonna be a fun, it's gonna be a fun couple of weeks. Uh, see, the last thing on our list was uh, Sherry and I just celebrated our anniversary uh, yesterday, and uh, forty three years, and uh, still counting. And so t- tomorrow's video will touch on that a little bit, um, but in a, in a sense, our anniversary was kind of boring. <laughs> but you took the day off, and that was the most important thing. We got to spend the day and go nice. have lunch and address and stuff. So that's a highlight of what's been going on here. And uh, uh, we can start. Well, start with John. What's what's new this week uh, at the in Eugene and your uh, your farm? Well, um, it was actually kind of a busy week. You know, last uh, Thursday when I was uh, when we were on, my mom had uh, come up. She's still up. She's leaving Good. tomorrow morning, and uh, so that was uh, that was kind of fun. Um, I did go start gathering the apples and stuff. I had a bunch of apples that were ready to go on uh, Monday uh, evening. I after work, I got home and did a apple press i was trying to do it over the weekend it just didn't yeah. happen i saw a facebook put uh, post that yeah. you're pressing apples yeah yeah and, and uh so i got real close to 30 gallons is like 29 gallons of uh wow yeah and that was that was after work i got home from work and it took about three the press that i have is a bladder press it it's uh <laughs> runs, runs off water and i got a, a nice macerator um and so it went together really well um, but yeah, I got about 30 gallons of uh, cider bubbling in the other room, getting you know starting to ferment. And nice. uh, we just gathered up yesterday and the day before. Mindy and I went out, and had to face uh, the facts and go out and gather tomatoes. So I have a massive amount of tomatoes. We we probably what do you think, Mindy? Probably 50 pounds, maybe a little more. We probably more on uh, tomato or tomatoes. Yes, yeah, just way more. So a bunch of tomatoes. We got to get them get them rolling. So yeah, that's about uh, that's about it. I lost about fifty pounds of tomatoes. <laughs> uh, my height, one of my wires in my greenhouse uh, snapped, and lost one third of my tomatoes went to the ground, and they were so tangled up and stuff we could hardly get them hung up again. So we a lot of a lot of branches of the stuff got thrown out that had tomatoes on them and stuff so uh there is some that we were able to save but we 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 took quite a hit <laughs> yeah i saw it. but yeah so um <laughs> my breaking rates are going away <laughs> on my tomatoes but i'm glad you're getting tomatoes you had a lot of tomato plants yeah yeah and they're doing they're doing well and there's still a bunch coming and to be honest with you we didn't pick them all. We just picked it till we said, oh, "Okay, that's enough." That's enough. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've got two. I've got like an eighteen and a twenty-one quart roaster that will get both of those going. But any more than that, I don't have any place to to cook them down. So we'll just do them as they go. But can't can't do all that work and then just let it go to waste. Even though I feel like it sometimes. I kind of yeah. like it. Like now, you don't have piggies and stuff, but. Um, like we had a lot of extra green tomatoes because of our disaster. And so uh, I have a couple of pigs that like green tomatoes. So I only let them have like one. I don't want them to get upset stomachs and stuff. But um, so, yeah, so uh, pigs are getting <laughs> green tomato treats, especially Penny. It's all about Penny over here nowadays. So, <laughs> but, yeah. Um, anything else going on over there? Uh, that's about it. That's about it. We had some company over the weekend as well. My uncle came. Uh, haven't seen him for quite a few years. Him and his wife came, uh, my, and my aunt came over. So that was fun. <coughs> Works busy, and the weather's been beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty smoky over here still. Yeah. Well, we, we've, we've, we've lucked out on the smoke. Not too, too bad, but the, the temperatures have been real nice. So Nice. Yeah. I hear that John Pierce, uh, John, um, <laughs> John up above, uh, needs to build another chicken coop. You had to do it, didn't you? It was not me. 
just so the world knows, it was not me. <clears throat> it what? was you. You're the one that got twenty two thousand. <laughs> well you know you figure you got all that new electricity and the new water system on there you may as well give it some demand so right yeah, yeah. so i think more coops are you know makes it's sense the customers that are demanding these chickens mm. but I mean, <laughs> yeah these cordies cross your pain in the butt yeah they're weird yeah six, 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 they are pigs. six, six coops now yeah they will be as soon as I put this one together, there'll be six. Debbie, how many did you guys get this go around on those? 24, and I lost four. You lost four? Yeah, I lost two. One the day before yesterday. I lost two yesterday. Wow. So I took the heat lamp off of them, and I moved everything out. And now when they lay down, they're trampling each other. Oh, you, they're weird that way, huh? They'll do Yes. That. And they trampled one of her. her yeah, they killed my had. one of my black, my little black ones that I had. They walked right over and stepped on his head, and he was out like that, broke his neck. Yeah, Jeez. that that uh, that buddy of mine who did birds the same time I did, he had a he had a, a plastic tote, big plastic tub that he was had him in. You know, they're real small, but his water jar thing got knocked over. Now there wasn't enough water in it for them to drown or anything like that, but they were getting their the feet moisture. wet. And just to get their feet wet, they were dog piling on each other to get out of the to get out of the water. That's what he said. And, and he lost five. Yeah, I don't know what it's. I, I have the plastic tub too. It's it's like um, a trough. Yeah. And the bottom is always wet, but the water isn't spilled. Oh, that's weird. I have to change this out at least every other day. Otherwise <laughs> it's like it's clay. And I and I use the animal bedding, the cedar. Yeah, cedar. Cedar or pine. But I put that down there real thin and it's it's always wet. I don't know if it's from them huh. going to the bathroom or what, but it's constantly wet. That's weird. So besides them stepping on each other and maybe that is what got him so uh, on your meat birds and have, uh, you have orders for them um, yeah what's what's your total amount of orders on meat birds you're going to be low no good no uh, right now i have 10 of them that are spoken for and possibly another five so 15 out of the 20. how old are they now um a week almost two weeks they're start they're getting their um, wing feathers gotcha they're, they're about two weeks that's why i've got all the stuff to build the new coop for <laughs> yeah i was gonna say you know in three weeks they can generally go outside so yeah yeah, yeah hey, we, we have all the stuff we just haven't i had stupid doctor's appointments and stuff so tomorrow yeah. we're gonna start on it so i can get these guys out because i I don't know. Maybe the other thing with that heat lamp on there that it was making the plastic sweat. Oh, maybe. maybe that's why the bottom was wet. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. It never did that to any of my other birds. They. Hmm. It was never wet like that. So, hmm. I don't know. Funky birds. Live and learn. But yeah, these guys are just pigs. They're weird. They're a weird. They're a weird bird. Yeah, so, right when I, he said it before, they're they're a weird bird. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, I I heard you. Uh, rumor has it you're trying to build a page for your homestead. So what are you gonna call your new page on Facebook for um, selling your birds and stuff? The name that's on the screen. So you're gonna actually call it Debbie Debbie's? Maybe. I wasn't sure because I know you have no J J D Pig Hobby. Oh, oh no! Right. I, did, I took Hobby out. I just okay, put gotcha. the homestead. Yep. Cool. So uh, it won't be too long. You should have that. I'll make sure when you have it um, registered with Facebook, uh, and I'll pull it up, and then we'll put your link. Uh, yeah, I'm almost. Your... I'm almost done with it. I think I on the last page. It looks like. I'm not sure. Yeah. I've never done one before, so. 
There you go. Start sometime. Um, yeah. And we'll put that link in our description. Anybody, uh, all the people that host on our show, we always put a link to their um, to their websites or to their Facebook or whatever you want to do. So, um, And that was the interesting question you asked me. You was asking me, like, well, what's an affordable way to create a web page? And there is several ways. You can do, go to uh, uh, Wix. You can do uh, your own servers. You can create your own blog type thing and stuff but um, a lot of people just to keep the cost down is just create a, a new page on your facebook and and you don't have to create a new facebook account you basically just hit a button where where it says page and if you don't have any it will be nothing listed in there but you can create a page based on your business so if you got a radio station like for example we have like 11 different pages. I have one for the radio station. I have one for Ranger Rob. I have one for uh, <laughs> our Muppets. Um, you know, we have different pages for different things we do, uh, but they're still associated to our main page. So, uh, uh, yeah, it's free. And it's like, so uh, if, if people are kind of wondering, like, well, we got to, you know, something for you. You want something for your homestead or for your farm and you want to keep the cost out. Uh, start off by just creating a web, uh, Facebook page and use that as your web page. And then later on, if it gets used more than you, you want, you know, something you want, something more fancier, then you look at maybe doing a, uh, a Wix page or something like that. So, but uh, yeah, yeah no I want to see how running. it goes and how it works before I go and pay a company. <clears throat> yeah. It may not do anything. You don't know. Yeah. Because it's like, I guess we're gambling. We, we got the new Central Oregon Grown, which means we have an account with with um, Barn the Door, which is <laughs> a monthly fee for that. Uh, but it, it intertwines with credit cards and all that stuff, and it goes on and on. Um, but uh, yeah, if you don't, <laughs> if you're just a <laughs> if you're just a homestead and you're trying to have a platform to show, hey, you know, we sell eggs. We uh, we might have some goat goats to sell or maybe uh, um, uh, you're doing pork and stuff you, you can get people to start following your your page of your homestead and and uh, keep them informed on what you have going what's going on in your your farm or homestead and that's a great way to go so uh, that was actually a very good question you asked today thanks good job Deb. I, do I do that sometimes <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know when you're going to make write that one on the calendar. Did <laughs> <laughs> you forget who you live with? <laughs> well, I, I was starting to think, I think you had to maybe just take all those Cornish crosses and, and just let them sleep with you guys at night. And, no. and maybe I'll kind of. No, Rob, yeah. you have lost your mind. <laughs> My dog takes up the whole bed. I'm not having a bunch of chicks that wants to eat 24 <laughs> 7. <laughs> well, maybe. If, if anything, the dog will have something to eat at night. <laughs> you met my dog. He's so dang lazy, he wouldn't lift his head up to eat him. <laughs> I know, it seems like oh, that's way too much work. So I have a shout out. Oh, yeah, I forgot shout outs. I know you did. Yeah, go ahead. I, tell I hailed. What's the, yes, what's, what's the shout out today? Discover Credit Card Company. Really? I'll explain. Yeah. Please, please do. <laughs> Are you going to do your graphics? Oh, well, I didn't have Rev to say graphics. <laughs> graphics. <laughs> okay, here we go. It's time for Ranger Rob shout outs. Yes, this is the time we want to recognize businesses, websites, and services. Here's today's spotlights. What's today's spotlight, Debbie? Spotlight is an awareness ah. with your credit cards. Yes. I opened my bill today that I got out of the mail, and it said the balance due was $6,000. Oh. <laughs> I looked at that bill, and somebody in California used it for lip ride. We're talking not just little lip ride. We're talking $346. For one ride. For a ride somewhere. Wow. But it started July 5th and ended on the 10th of this month. And it was 70, 75 entries. 
Wow. So 75 different yeah. bills on top of that, and it all equals out to $4,600. Now, the catch to this is I don't use that card. Every once in a while, we'll use it like <clears throat> on Amazon. Yeah. And I have a prescription for Chewy. Other than that, we don't use that card. So somehow they got the information. So just awareness, be careful shopping online. And so as a shout out, how did the company uh, discover? Because, yeah, go ahead. You can go. No, go ahead. Fine, I will. <laughs> <laughs> so they immediately took all of those off. Wow. They're still doing the investigation, yeah. but they're taking it off until the investigation's over. Yeah. And um, if they find it's that we used it, they put it back. So right. I give them kudos for immediately taking it off. So we're not paying that bill until the investigation's over. Yeah. The minimum so yeah, payment. I give them a shout out. I mean, it, it was a phone call, maybe 10 minutes long, and wow. it was done. The minimum wow. payment on it is two hundred and eighty-four dollars. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would. Just in a month, four thousand some dollars. Wow. 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 <laughs> I see now going. What did we use that card for? We don't use that card. Wow. So yeah. So just be aware, people, that they're still out there to get you. Yeah. How about you, John Pearson? You got any shout outs? Uh, you know what? No real shout outs this week. I'm I'm kind of lazy on the shout outs. I apologize. But uh, <laughs> no, nobody, nobody needs uh, my uh, gratitude this week. <laughs> <laughs> I have a shout out for John for his humor. <laughs> However, you know, if, if there is people are watching this show, and of course, uh, we get a lot of people watch it after, after the fact. Um, if you uh, uh, do have a homestead or farm and you want to talk about your farm and stuff, you want to uh, even be interviewed on the show, come on here with a panel and let us pick on you. Um, yeah, we'd be happy to talk, you know, find out what you're all about and your location. And, we'll um, learn from you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, we'll put you know links to your uh, site and, and all that stuff down in the description and stuff. But, uh, yeah, we'd love to uh, help other homestead, other farms, uh, other kinds of uh, – related businesses i know i got a guy um that's going to be doing some drone work for us and uh um so uh once once we kind of do that uh, on a clearer day mm -hmm. <laughs> uh he's going to do some stuff on our pigs and stuff and um <clears throat> luckily my neighbors are pretty cool about it they're not filming the neighbors and all that stuff but a lot of people when they see a drone they think oh they're spying on me <laughs> it's like well, first of all, usually you can't make out what's going on with the camera. They're really small. But yeah. two is he's going to be focused on our property. So, Well, the anyway, county um, made out on our property when we had the pigs over by the fence. They made us move them. Yeah, I, um, I, I saw even on um, uh, next door, somebody was talking about someone's flying a drone over there. Let's take them out of the air with a shotgun and stuff. And it's like, oh, come on. <laughs> it's like... It's so much drama. <laughs> I tell and, you, uh, what, even on a smoky day, you know, even on a smoky day, though, that little aerial shot that you got at the beginning of the thing, that's really cool. Yeah, I just I just want clips of uh, uh, people can get a, a general idea what the region looks like. And then um, a lot of my drone work will be done kind of low to the ground from 10 to 20 feet above the pigs and get kind of different aspects of them moving in their paddocks and stuff. So. If I create a commercial for Central Oregon Grown, we can kind of, uh, I'm kind of looking forward to it when we get piglets because they're so fun to watch. Um, I have just clips of different things on, uh, with the pigs, but a different perspective than on the ground like we normally do. And uh, so anyway, well, um, once I, um, so I told the guy, he's like, we'll be happy. Uh, and he's really uh concerned of making sure he does it right and he's legal and he meets all the criteria of having a drone and stuff and um so uh uh we'll give him a chance to kind of explain all that and some of the things he does and 
and he's on the ranch. And so, uh, yeah, we'll give him a shout out. So um, I know uh, one thing I should at least say is his name is Thomas. Uh, give me a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be only fair if I at least say that. Thomas um, um, Markham. Markham. Thomas J uh, John Markham. Anyway, super nice guy and uh, definitely wants to do it right. And uh, so uh, it was really neat. He just shot up the drone for a little test the, uh, over our property and did a little little sample thing and he gave that to me he says you do what you want with it if you want to use it and so i made a little intro on it and, uh, but there'll be much more in-depth stuff in the future so nice. uh, you know, thank, thanks to thomas um anyway we'll get him on the show and let him talk about himself and does and he so charge by the hour or by the project uh i'm not sure um we're doing some graphics work and some trading and stuff, so I'm not sure exactly. But, oh, okay. uh, uh, it's affordable, job. very affordable. But uh, um, every time when you're dealing with me, there's always something mm -hmm. <laughs> like I, I'm helping him make an intro and some things like that. And so, uh, um, but he, he's a new business and he's starting out and he could use some help. And so yeah. I offered a few things that we're capable of doing and he's got stuff that he does that I don't. And, uh, so yeah, but there is some money involved, but <laughs> I don't know how much. Not very much. It costs about three and a half pounds of bacon an hour. That right? about, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but and I, yes, I, my sale on bacon is still on there, but I f uh, found out that I didn't program it right on the uh, website. So if you saw that the price was like four ninety nine or five ninety nine, it is back to three ninety nine for about a week. And uh, if you want to try some out, outstanding um, bacon, come check it out. Uh, the, the stipulation is to keep it nice and cheap is uh, to pick it up here on the ranch. So uh, if you're in the Terrebonne area or within so much, uh, if we have to deliver and all that, then it's a whole different ball game. But, yeah, um, yeah get yourself a, a, a good price on, ha on, on uh, bacon. Give it a try. And you'll love it. And it's cheaper than the grocery store. So go for it. That so. is a good price. Yeah, it's really good. So, yeah, we went to uh, Costco and priced it. Oh my God. Talk about sticker shock. How much is it in Costco now? What was well, it? Put it this way you have a fortune in what you have. <laughs> what was it? $8.99 a pound? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's, it's that, some of them are that high in Safeway. So, uh, it varies, but it's definitely starting around. Uh, Four or five ninety nine a pound for the cheap stuff, um, thin sliced, all that stuff, which I, I wouldn't want. But, um, but yeah. There was and, a day uh, you bought it. What's that? There was a day that you bought it. Oh yeah. But you don't have to now, guys, because we got all we of got, us that we got it. Yeah. Yeah. So. Well, and, well, uh, I finally um, fixed the damage that the turkeys did to the that one coop. Oh geez! Oh, they they <laughs> tore up the whole bottom of that one to run you through it and stuff. They would they literally back up and then run into it. <laughs> the dumbest things ever. Crazy. <laughs> That's why I let you guys raise my turkey. <laughs> yeah, I bet okay. you're happy. Oh I yeah, I was, in the freezer. I yep, got the mine's one in the left. freezer. Just had to pluck you them. Know, I was good. It must just be the breed that it was, because my the one that I have, the heritage, it's not like that at all. It is not. He wants his food, but he is not like pushy, like those white-breasted ones. They were just pushy. They wouldn't even let nobody else eat. <laughs> the the um, worst in crosses. I raised uh, actually oh, I don't both. Know that I yet. did. <laughs> I did bronze and I've done whites and and yeah I agree that the whites were much more aggressive. Yeah. Uh, turkey. Um, were, and ours, were, of course, all of our animals turn out to be Amazons. Because it was literally, <laughs> but that one tom was like up to my nose. <laughs> and I'm only barely five foot, so that's how tall that dumb thing was. Wow. Man. I'm starting to think about 
I don't know. Do you uh do any of you two have uh I think they call them an egg um a grill for cooking. Um the round uh round tops on them and stuff. Do you have one? Oh, I know what you're talking about. No. No, they're they're expensive. Yeah, they're expensive. Really good though. They're not that big though. No. But I I want I want to get a good grill that I could put a a rotary, you know, so I could put a whole chicken in and do some of my own rotisserie chicken. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have one of those rotisserie chicken machines, but I, I don't know. If, I'm afraid that might be too small for our chickens. <laughs> that we buy one for your Traeger. Uh, well, I don't think my Traeger, I have an older one, has the a hookup for the, the, the rotate. Board, the, I know. You know, the you motor. Can buy, you can buy it. I don't know if this one will. For them on the side. Oh. Yeah, this one. May, uh, the newer ones may have them, but yeah, uh, mine's an uh, old Traeger. So anyway, I was looking into that. I uh, also I was talking about on uh, the video coming out tomorrow. I cooked. Uh, I always try to try something new to cook, you know. So I decided I was going to do. Uh, um. Oh, now I went blank of what they are. Um. My wife's probably listening to the show going, Rob, it's a... <laughs> um, you kill him, Sherry. Yeah. So, uh, uh, <laughs> gosh, I just went blank on it. They're like clams. What do you call them? Oysters. Oysters. Scallops. Scallops. Oh, yeah. nasty. So I bought some scallops, and I thought, I'm going to do this, because Sherry doesn't like scallops. So I'm going to, I think, I saw a really good recipe online. And I uh, watched it really close, got the recipe, cooked them up. They were awful. <laughs> <laughs> I could have told you that before you started. Yeah, well, he, he got a good technique. I just overcooked them. And so uh, once you overcook scallops, they were just, yeah. yeah I so I, I blew it. I so now I, I need to practice some more, but uh, I do like a good challenge. <laughs> yeah, John so, made and, uh, some bread. So, anything big going on this uh, this weekend for you guys for your uh, homesteads? Working on that chicken coop. Yeah, you're good. Maybe electric. Looking up electricity. Yeah, to the I, barn. He hasn't I done that yet. That done. Yeah, you gotta get those big screen TVs in there and everything. That well, the they need dog. their music. They need yeah. Their mommy music. So we'll put on Kid Rock or something. Yeah. <laughs> And then you gotta hook them up with so they can listen to your podcast. So, um, yeah, yeah, how they're gonna be slaughtered. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, how about you, John Pearson? Any big things going on this weekend? Or getting just cal- calming down with no no uh, company. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be uh, working on processing a bunch of tomatoes. Mm-hmm. But we did have one casualty the other day. Mindy and I went out uh, to. Uh, gather the eggs at the end of the evening and we're just walking out i got home from work and we walked out into the the chicken's yard and it's just a big well rob you've seen it it's just a big yeah. yard that they yeah. roam around in i look over and i go and as we're walking out there the big old hawk sitting on top of one of my birds wow. oh geez it was uh it, and it flew off and it, it took out one of our uh, leghorns and uh so the, the, the chickens have been inside the, the main coop yard area, which is kind of small for that many birds inside for a couple of days until the hawk, you know, realizes that they can't come any day to, to get a bird. Because yeah. it seems to me like, you know, easy pickings for a hawk. We haven't had an issue this year yet. We have, you know, <clears> last, <throat> but I think last year was, you know, a raccoon or something like that. Um but the the hawk just sits there and you know they just take the head off and and then leave it fly you know and come back later to finish it we got rid of the body but i didn't want the bird coming back so i got to do some maintenance a little bit of preventative little fixing of the yard and that kind of stuff on the chicken area as well so yeah. so do you have a cover on your chicken or no i have a cover i have a cover on the uh the so we got a chicken coop with a probably, I don't know, it's maybe a 10 by 10 or a 12 by 12 covered fenced area that's attached to it. But then I've got a large, real large fenced yard that we open the door and during the day, they just, they have this massive, you know, chicken yard to do their thing in. And at the end of the night, they'll, you know, they all go back into the coop and, 
and into their little yard and we feed them and water them inside their inside their covered area mm -hmm. but uh that's what that I've, I've kept them inside the covered area for a, a couple of days but we normally like to you know out and yeah they got a you know huge yard to to play in and stuff so well you know that yeah. box that we had here yeah when those pigs came home that fox has not been back oh really yeah, I love. I seen it on. Um, I think it was next door. People were talking about that. If you have pigs, foxes and stuff won't come in your yard. And as soon as the, our other pigs were gone, that's when the fox was coming every night. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, then, yeah. Buddy, buddy of mine said that uh, you know, with a uh, with hawks or the birds of prey, you know, unless it's something really massive, uh, he said he told me I should get a rooster. I don't have a rooster. Um, he said that 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 is a deterrent. No. Let me bring you a rooster. Nope. No. <laughs> nope. No rooster. That was you answered that way too fast. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I'll just keep buying little chickies. I'll just keep... <laughs> We're gonna nope. hold off. I but that's what he said. He said with his, he doesn't have any issues with the hawks because of his roosters. But yeah. uh, I don't know if that's the case or not. It was just it was a real bummer. And I tell you what, that thing was just sitting there looking at us like. What are you gonna do? You're not. Gonna, yeah. Not a, I have to laugh. I'm kind of smiling because my uh, my son came over with his uh, my grandkids over, and uh, uh, the and the little one I think he's maybe seven or eight years old. I think he is little Evan, uh, really cute kid. And we took their chickens, their old chickens, and and they're out back uh, with in the. Uh, guarding the part you know the paddocks and stuff so i got 12 chickens out there now and i had more <laughs> anyway so little avid cutest kid in the world he's outside and he, and he comes back in and he goes we had two we gave you guys two black chickens but i can only count one and it's like oh crap <laughs> I, I didn't tell him that i lost he disappeared i don't know what happened to him <laughs> anyway um, so oh, he's like, God. So I'm sitting there going, oh my God, I, I've killed your chicken. I'm sorry. You know? <laughs> anyway, but I didn't get feathers. I didn't get anything. It was whatever got it. It took it. Yeah. And, uh, um, I, um, so anyway, it was just kind of laughing. I'm going, oh gosh, I was kind of busted the other day today, <laughs> but it was so cute. Like, where's the other black chicken? It's like, oh, your grandpa let him die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's around here somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I he wanted to fit up. Neighbors. <laughs> and, and I looked at my son and her, and her uh, his wife, and uh, they both uh, kind of you, know, you can tell him the truth. He's you know he's realist. So I told him, well, he disappeared. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway, with that note, uh, guys, uh, we had a good co conversation. I'm, I'm, I I uh, hope that we kind of put a good emphasis on being prepared, and. Uh, especially with this fire season. It's not just the east side or the west side. Both sides, you guys are having fires over there and we're having them over here. So uh, uh, I think I think it's a good idea to talk about being prepared and having a little bit of extra in case you have to bug out. Even us old people, we may have to bug out. Yeah. yeah. No, I think it's a, I think it's a good, uh, I think it's a good idea. I think it's uh, something people don't think about. And I think it's something if you're, a prepper or, or or trying to prepare, I think it's important. Yeah, and you, you don't have to be a prepper to actually have a few things ready to go, just in case. So does, um, does anybody know um, where Good Eats Homestead comes from? Texas. She told us once, and I, Was it Texas? And, Texas. Oh, and Texas. I didn't get to say hi to Jack what? either. Sorry. Oh, no, that's Streamline. And it doesn't um, say Texas nowhere on there. I think she's over oh, he, uh, over here, but um, we asked life. her once and I'd forgotten. So, if she's still on, um, uh, where Giddy, are you from? Giddy? Where you from? And Streamliner too. What what state are you yeah, all they're from? Texas. They're east of Texas. Good. And raccoons are my chickens' worst. Yeah. She might have. She might have. Streamliners in Texas, um, California for Jack. Good eats. I it's she's said, oh, she's in tech. No, in yeah, Texas she's food. in Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good it's job, hot. babe. It's hot down there. There you go. <laughs> Seven o'clock. Well, th thanks for getting back with us, and, and it's nice to have the Texas people down here. Yeah. Uh, up here. 
So are we up from Texas or yes. down from Texas? Over no. there. Over there. That's right. <laughs> So anyway, guys, we got to wrap up the video. I want to thank everybody for joining us. And those of you that are listening to the recording, thank you so much. Yep, 107. Yep, yep, yep. Ooh, <laughs> and wow. uh, Yeah. So, uh, and yeah. I want to thank my host for being on the show and sharing your stories. We're and from sharing... Oregon. Yeah, we're all, all Oregons. Oregonians. Except Rex. We have another guy that's uh, on the host, and he's from South Oregon. Carolina. So. Oh, yeah. Is he South Carolina? So, North, well, he might be no, oh, he's, he's North Carolina. Carolina. North. He's North Carolina. He's going to be pissed now. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, he's not a big a wiener. For, he's not. He's a big wiener for not making it to the show because he was grumpy. <laughs> he was tired. I know. He works hard. He does. Anyway. <laughs> and, he makes for, and he makes fun of my mustache. So, you know, I got to get him a little bit. So, anyway, <laughs> but who knows? We got to see if he listens to the show to the end. Anyway, uh, anyway, thank you very much, everybody, for watching. John, I know we're late. I got to shut her down. Graphics. <laughs> yep, and the graphics are coming. As soon as Bye, I find everybody. Them. Good night. Bye, guys. Bye. This video is made possible by Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, available on Amazon right now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.